All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Patterson, New Jersey, at the beautiful High Railers layout. My name is Jeffrey Pottersman, and I'm along here with Eric Wenslow. And today we are going to do a video review of the brand new Lionel S2 Electric. This item number here is item number 6 84508, and this is one of five different variations of the S2 Electric, well, technically six different variations of the S2 Electric that Lionel came out with in the 2017 Signature Edition catalog. So of those various editions, you have this cab number here, which is number 113. Um, this was based off of the years of service between 1936 through the 40s. They also have number 3207, which is an earlier rendition painted for the New York and Hudson River Railroad. Then number 115, which was essentially this here, but with yellow safety stripes. Number 4710, which is the Penn Central. Number 101, which is that fantasy lightning stripe. And then there was another one that was issued with the set in that kind of old school tin plate, but we're going to mention that in a little bit. What I do want to start off with is a little bit of history on the S-Class locomotives. And the S-Classes were built in the very early 1900s on a joint project by Alco and General Electric. And these were built out of necessity. Prior to this time, the New York Central Railroad was running trains into Manhattan that were still steam powered. And it just made Manhattan a total mess. It's not what it is today with all these luxury high rises and big real estate. Nobody wanted to really live in certain areas because of all the steam and exhaust from the steam locomotives. So they tried putting a tunnel in there and having the trains run through the tunnel. But what happened was there was a big wreck where because of all the steam, one train went in, the train behind it couldn't see the signals due to all the smoke and rear-ended it causing a lot of deaths. So the New York City Council passed a resolution banning steam locomotives from Manhattan. And they gave the New York Central Railroad five years to do so, and this was the result. And it was, after a few trial and errors, it turned out to be very good. Um, it was eventually bumped from mainline service around 1913 when Grand Central Terminal opened, but it still served a very lengthy career. Most of these served up into the 1980s. And they were very popular on the New York Central Harlem line, shuttling smaller commuter trains, but they were also seen taking the 20th Century Limited and trains like that, not up to Croton Harmon, but from the yard in Mott Haven into Grand Central Terminal. So these were a workhorse of the New York Central Railroad. These were a staple of the New York Central Railroad. And Eric made a very good point to me saying that when Lionel Trains first got it started in the 1900s, this was an actual prototype that they based their locomotives on. So you still had that toy train style train, but yet the earlier Lionel locomotives, when they got away from the little Electric Express cigar box on wheels, this was one of the locomotives they based it on. So Eric, to you, where did you get this locomotive? I bought this locomotive at the uh, past York show in April. All right, very nice, a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, so what was one of the particular reasons that you got this locomotive? See, I like the New York Central Railroad, so I'm thrilled to be doing a review on this because the New York Central Railroad is my favorite. But do you have any particular reason as to why you got it? Is the road name anything? or? I like the New York Central also. I wouldn't say that was the main reason I bought it. But uh, I think that you know, what I liked about it, as you mentioned, it's, it's kind of historical. This locomotive has a big part in, in Lionel history. It's, you, you think about the 20s, they came out with the, uh, the famous number 402 and the 408 in tin plate and standard gauge. And they also made an O-gauge locomotive like this. So it was really, as you said, the first locomotive that Lionel produced that represented a real train. So I, I like the history of it. And the other thing, it's, it's, it's kind of a different engine. You, you have a lot of steam engines on your layout or a lot of diesel engines. This is a nice little electric. Um, you know, it's, it's a powerful engine. It's, it, it's, it's, it's something different. When you, you come to your layout, it gives you something different to run. It's something unique. And it's a, I think it's a, you know, it's a good looking, it's a good looking locomotive. And I agree 100%. This is, I mean, again, I'm partial. It is New York Central. And Grand Central Terminal is my favorite place in New York City, so um, and I love the history behind it. So yeah, obviously, I would say this is an awesome locomotive. Good time you got it. Uh, I had to save money because I knew, because I heard about rumors of a Niagara, which eventually did come out. So we'll do get that when we get it. But um, so well, in, the, in the fall, you can pull the passenger train up through Niagara, and then I'll pick up the cars with the perfect. I'll take the train into the Grand Central Station. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, I'll bring the train in. I'll have a nice long stretch of passenger cars behind the Niagara. We'll, get the uh, S2 electric to bring it into Grand Central for us. So um, By the time it's out, our Grand Central station here at the High Rollers will be all reworked and it'll be beautiful. That's right. Can, uh, we are working on redoing our Grand Central terminal and MetLife building, so that will definitely be um, a video for another day because, well, it's not finished yet, but we will show you guys because it's something we are proud of. 
But um, speaking of stuff we are proud of, we are proud to have this locomotive here on our layout. We are proud to do a review of it. So in just a second, I'm going to turn it over to Eric, and Eric is going to talk us through some of the features that you could find on the Lionel Legacy version. Because remember, this is the Lionel Legacy. How many years ago did they come out with the original one? They came out with a, they did an S1 in 2003. Right. Which was, uh, you remember Lionel used to do those special editions? Yeah. It wasn't cataloged, it came out with a special, so they did that in 2003. And they came out with an S2 in 2007, which was a TMCC version, which I actually own. I just burnt out the motor, so that was... Okay, yeah, well, obviously... You see, I like to, I like, I like lot, to run so it. And it's a good thing. I will say the Legacy does run a lot better than the, uh, than the TMCC that, version ever did. That's a good so. thing. So, like you said, this is the Legacy version, and I'm going to hand it over to Eric in just a second, and we're going to go over all of the uh, features that you could find on this beautiful locomotive. Okay, let's take a closer look at the locomotive. I just want to point out some of the, the features and some, some of the things that have made it attractive to me to purchase it. First of all, I chose the number 113. In the catalog, Lionel said this is the style of the engine in the 30s and 40s in the steam era, which is the era I like. So that was one of the reasons I chose it. And the other reason is um, engine 113 is in the St. Louis Museum of Transportation. So if I ever want to go and see the, you know, the real version of this, I could maybe make my way to St. Louis and, and do that. Just some features on the engine. Um, if you can see down here, these are the third rail, the third rail pickups. So this engine was powered by a, by a third rail as it was coming into Grand Central Station. So you have that on either side, on both the, you know, the front and the, and the back truck. And there's also pantographs. So the pantographs were for when the engine came into Grand Central Station, there was such complex trackage that they couldn't you know, power with third rail. So these pantographs would actually take power off the ceiling of Grand Central Station. So that's why you have the third rail power and the in the, um, the the pantographs. Just some other features. There's a you know a nice bell in the front. We'll talk about that more as we as we run the engine. Um, you can see the the, cute, the crew figures here in the front. The, the back of the engine. Uh, there's a you know a, a cab, which is important because one of the benefits of this engine was it could go frontwards or backwards, but there was no turntable, which made it a big benefit over a steam engine. You didn't have to turn the engine around. You could the crew could go from one end to the other, and it would be off in in a couple. Um, in a matter of seconds. Um, there is a builder's plate, which you can't see here, but this says, you know, Alco Locomotive Company and General Electric. As Jeffrey mentioned, the two builders of the, of the engine. It also mentions uh, Schenectady, New York. Um, one thing which I like with it, the new engines, and I think this was in the, the previous version of this also, but the, the top comes off, so you have your controls in the top of the engine, so they're easy, easy access. The interesting thing I thought was interesting in this engine, the only, there's only one button on this. There's a run and program button. There's no other buttons. Usually they have uh, you know, Odyssey on, Odyssey off, but I guess those, are, those have gone away. It's just one button, run and, and program. So you know, hopefully you don't have to go in here too often, but if you do, it's nice and convenient to take the, the top off. Other than that, there's you know, nice, nice rivet detail. If I can turn the one thing I thought was nice, if I turn it around, looks like, like some nice detail on the front here. This little little platform. There's a the door in the front, which I guess the crew went went in there. Again, some numbers again on the front. And dual headlights on both sides. I guess you know, making it possible for the engine to go to go either way and making operations nice and smooth. All right. So Eric did a great job going over the features of the S2, but there was one feature that he said he did want to tell us about. We're about to see it in a second. Eric, what was that feature? You know, I mentioned the bell, but I didn't say specifically. You can see the bell here. The bell actually rings, or it moves back and forth as it as it rings, which is a you know very very cool feature. Um, something you don't see in a lot of Lionel locomotives, and you're about to see when we start it up and and move it out. So I just wanted to point out that feature. That's probably you know one of the unique features on this engine, and one of the the better features of this engine. Yep, just as Lionel likes to do, just add to the authenticity and the realism of the locomotives. So. If you are interested in one of these, and I think that you all should be interested after seeing this great video review and as you're about to see it run, the MSRP is $799.99. So, like I'm probably going to have to do now, I'm probably going to have to go out and get one. Eric did a great job convincing me, and being a New York Central guy, I guess it kind of leaves me with no choice. I already have the E8s, and I'll be getting the Niagara soon, and we're about to see this thing run, and it's only going to make you want one even more. So, without further, before we get this going, uh, this has been Jeffrey Potishman. And Eric Winslow. And this has been a New Jersey High Railers production of the 
Legacy Equipped S2 video review. So without further ado, let's see this train go.